What's going on? It's Hellfire with Machine Masters. I want to show you guys a quick trick I use to get my drums to punch through the mix a bit harder. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So to achieve this effect, we're going to use a basic transient shaping plugin. Now there's two different ones that I have that I often use. The first one is Transient Master by Native Instruments. And the second one is SPL Transient Designer by Plugin Alliance. Um, this plugin is also offered in the UAD version as well as the Plugin Alliance version. It just depends on which platform you wish to use. If you have UAD, you know, you can use that as well. Now, as far as this versus the Native Instruments Transient Master, they basically do the same exact thing. I really can't uh, hear too much of a difference between them. The only difference they're going to have is, you know, what uh, little functions they have between them. The only other difference is the price. Uh, this SPL one is about $200. And the Native Instruments Transient Master is about $99. And this one also comes free with Machine. So if you own Machine, you should already have this plugin. If not, you should go to your service center and just download it for free. Here's the UAD version. Basically looks the exact same as the Plugin Alliance. There's no, no difference except it doesn't have the different uh, selectable A, B, and, you know, and all that stuff. Um, so I usually use the Transient Master most of the time, so that's the one I'm going to demonstrate. Let's get rid of these. Now you can see I have this beat going. So this is basically a kick, snare, and then I have a hi-hat, but um, we're going to do the demonstration on the kick and the snare only. Now these drums are from the Masada Cycle Kit Volume 1, available on MachineMasters.com right now, so make sure you check that out too, so you can have these same exact drum sounds if you like them. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit play on the beat, and then we're going to play around with the parameters on the plug-in. So when you bring up the plug-in, basically you have three parameters, or three main parameters. You have your attack, you have your sustain, and you have your gain. The attack is basically what's going to bring that punch um, to, to your drum. The sustain is basically going to lengthen the decay, basically make the sound longer. So if you have a nice reverb sound, you know, or a room sound on the, on the uh, sample, it's going to stretch that out and make it longer. And then you have a gain parameter that basically compensates for the extra volume you get when using the attack parameter. Um, then you have a limiter, which is basically going to limit to 0 dB or limit to whatever this is set to. And you have a smooth button, which I really don't use because I don't really want it to be smooth. If I'm using this plugin, I want it to, you know, be hard and punching through. So I typically don't use this. So let's just play the beat back and uh, let's go through some of these parameters and see what they do. So I'm just going to bring up the attack. So you can hear right away that, you know, that snare is punching through harder already. And we're only about halfway through the range of the attack knob. Just make sure you don't go too overkill with this parameter because you'll just end up shortening the decay or the, the length of your sound too much and it won't sound as natural. So let's A-B that, see what it sounds like before and after. So this will be before. <laughs> So let's check out what the sustain knob does. Now to do this, I'm gonna just solo the drums and we're gonna see what this does. So you can see it basically brings out the reverb and the snare. See how that sounds in the mix.
think it's a little too much for this. No, I'm gonna bring it back down. So you can see it makes a really big difference on that snare drum. Now let's see how it sounds on the kick. So let's bring it up on the kick drum. Hit play and let's uh, check out these parameters. See what the decay does. So yeah, you see in just a few minutes, I got my drums hitting real nice. Now let's do a quick A-B before and after to see what this sounds like. So yeah, I pretty much use this technique in just about every single mix that I do. Hopefully you guys find this useful. And uh, like I said, just be careful when you're using it in a mix. You want to make sure you level out your gain because it is going to add some volume to your sound. So just make sure you use the gain knob or your fader to, you know, um, compensate for the extra volume you get. Um, make sure you leave your comments, uh, your questions, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Peace.